We're back with exclamation point, a bonus conversation you'll only see here on CBS News New York. So first question, what's your take on Andrew Cuomo? I mean, he's now got a podcast, he's trying to make a comeback. Is there any possibility for him to have a future in politics? Well, as I think you know, he and I were really close. You know, we worked a lot together, and he appointed me to the state committee. Uh, I think after all that has happened, which was shocking to me, the last thing New York needs is him to have a comeback, and the last thing the world of podcasts needs is him to be on a podcast. He needs to go do something else if he wants to try to redeem himself. So basically what you're saying is go help the homeless. Yeah. Go, I mean, he's got to... Tutor kids who need, who don't speak English, you know, give... Um, free LSAT prep classes to low-income kids who who can't afford to take the classes, you know, since he was a lawyer. Do something of merit. Look at, you know, uh, uh, McGreevy when he got stopped being, got, uh, resigned uh, from being governor of New Jersey. He's become a reverend. He's working with people in prison. Right. He's dedicated his life to something greater than, than politics. I don't think Cuomo knows there is something greater than politics. So what's your take on the new city council, which for the first time has more women? I know. What's your take on that? I think it's great. I mean, it has more women and it has a whole bunch of LGBTQ people. It's really, really diverse. It's really young, which makes me feel really old. Uh, oh, come on. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, I, I good, good for New York for bringing such a diverse group of people. And they seem, you know, really active. They've done, we've had some great hearings on homeless issues. They passed a rat bill package, which is, I can say personally, from when I walk the dog, very important. So I, I think they're doing great. So given what happened in the gubernatorial race, do you think that the Republicans in the council have a chance of picking up more seats than they have now? Um, probably not. I mean, they used to have one on the Upper East Side, but it's been so long since they've had that. Uh, and I think, you know, there's... But an there are parts of Brooklyn and Queens. Oh, sure. Well, there's an assembly member who got elected from the Diker Heights area who now might be getting unelected because he... Doesn't they don't live in the district or something? It's okay. you know never say never because they used to actually have two Republicans from the Upper East Side, but I don't think so. So a few personal questions. Okay. As a New Yorker, where's the first place you take someone visiting from out of town, and what do you think is a must-see experience here in New York? Um, well, I think the High Line is a must-see experience, and I'm lucky enough to live in Chelsea, so uh, uh, I get to, you know, experience it all of the time. But that's some place I would tell somebody they absolutely, absolutely have to go. And the first place I would take them is Broadway. I get it. Yeah. So. What's your go-to takeout spot in your neighborhood? It's so sad because um, I was, uh, we would order and go regularly to, it was the Moonstruck and then the rail line, a diner on 9th and 23rd. And it um, went out of business as a result of COVID. So I, I'm struggling now. And when I ran for mayor, we did a video. We taped it in the Moonstruck, the Mooney, as we would call it. So it's becoming a web MD. Ugh. So, you know, that was the next question I was going to ask. Because so many businesses, you know, went out of business during the pandemic, was there some place that meant something special yeah. to you that has no longer, that no longer is there? Is it the diner or yes. is, there, is there another place as well? Well, the, the Moonstruck and the Rail Line really are, it was that place. I mean, it really, it's a huge uh, deficit both food-wise and just personally. So would you describe yourself as organized? Why or why not? Um, and what would Kim say? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. My wife would say no. I'm organized in my own fashion. I'm a very good organizer, um, but I'm not all that organized. So this is the last question. Okay. So lately I've been indulging in a craving for, believe it or not, praline butter cake ice cream. Mm. What's the craziest craving that you've ever had? I'm obsessed with chocolate and peanut butter. So anything together, together, or? together. So anything that has that in it, particularly if it's in an ice cream variety, or a peanut butter cup, or a peanut butter cup. But the ice cream, like Haagen Dazs, it's not cheap. Has peanut butter chocolate, but the problem is I can't. I'll eat the whole thing. I just can't <laughs> stop. So that's the same thing with me yeah. with praline butter cake. Like I think a, when it says serving so on the side, serving size, it should be the whole thing, and then we would both <laughs> be fine. But I'm with you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining me. Christine Quinn, thanks a lot. Thank you.